Hi, I'm Claire Sofield, Managing Director of Four Recruitment. Um, so I've not really spoke about this subject before, um, which is all around fertility, but as it's National Fertility Week, um, I thought I'd I kind of share my experience, I guess, um, and my thoughts on the subject, which I know is um, quite emotive, um, but yeah, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about it. So I'm now 39, 14 January, and I got to about 34, and decided that I desperately wanted to be a mum, um, and well, I guess, no, it was more that I was, wasn't was prepared to leave this planet not being a mum. Um, when I set this business up, I was 25, and in my head, I had a kind of timeline that I'd spend, you know, 10 years growing the business, seeing how far I could take it, and then think about having kids. So I kind of stuck to those timelines, only not in the most conventional way. So some people who will see my post know that whilst I am a mum, um, I went down a little bit of a different journey. I hate the word journey, but it's true. Um, so I had my daughter um, as a solo mum. So Ruby is now three and she's IVF donor conceived. So um, whilst a lot more women do it these days than used to, it's still you know relatively new. So the background to it, like I say, is I got to like 34 and I thought right, kind of nearing that time frame when I wanted to start to think about having kids, yet at that point there wasn't a significant other. Um, I'd made some pretty bad decisions when it came to my love life and I just didn't want that time pressure of having to meet someone in a certain time frame. Um, I knew that I may have some challenges in terms of fertility from pre-existing medical conditions. So I went to a gynecologist, um, kind of got checked out and unfortunately it was just way worse than I could have anticipated. Um, so I was almost there with making the decision to do it on my own and then when I got those tests back I, I, I almost felt, well, I say this, I don't mean this in a bad way, but I almost felt like I didn't have a choice because I just want, wanted to be a mum um, and my body clock was ticking. Um, so I remember speaking to my brother, who's my business partner, and saying, yeah, I think I'll give it six months and just wait for the business to get to a certain point. And Philip was like, no, you'll be waiting forever for the business to get to a certain point. If that's what you want to do and you've got your heart set on it, you've got my whole support and, you know, absolutely go for it. Um, and that's what happened effectively. Um, so I guess I wanted to tell my story. There's loads more to it obviously but I wanted to tell my story because it's I guess it's quite different. Um, looking back and reflecting I wanted to talk about the fertility education side which is one of the themes um, of this week and the reality is even though it wasn't that long ago when I was in my 20s like it just wasn't talked about it like fertility just wasn't talked about um you know the option to freeze your eggs well I didn't even know it was an option um whereas now if if as a woman that's something that you think you might want to do as in become a mum then why would you not because the reality is and I'm no like medical professional but the reality is as every year goes by especially when you start to get kind of mid-30s things decline massively your egg count your egg quality um so why would you not put yourself in the best possible position i know i, I don't know the in, ins and outs i know there is a cost attached to that and i absolutely get not everybody will be in that position but it's not just about freezing your eggs it's just about understanding what your fertility is um because until you start trying for a baby the reality is you have no idea so it's something similar to like i did you kind of say right, I'll, I'll do it in 10 years time and then when that time reaches and I literally had the fertility of someone in the 40s at the age of 34. That's quite a blow to find that out. Um, would I have had a baby any earlier? No. Would I have frozen my eggs if I'd have known it was an option? Definitely. Um, and interestingly, I've had two conversations with my team recently. Um, I think they hope they I hope they feel they can talk about their fertility openly because um, I speak about my story. The team will know about it. And I've said to both of them who are in their early 30s why would you not and both of them were a bit like shit yeah I don't, I don't I don't know why I've not considered this already so hopefully by speaking to people about it and certainly my team we employ 75% women um, I want them to feel like they can talk to me as a manager and I think having gone through quite I guess quite an interesting story myself hopefully they'll feel they can do um, and some people might just be okay with leaving it to fate and that is okay too and some don't want kids and that is equally okay but I suppose it's just about educating and knowing what your choices are um, and even from the education side of things there's kind of there's doing all that and assessing your um, fertility and where you're at but it's also um, I don't know just understanding all the you know 
options that are available, I just, I just don't think it's talked about very much. So from an education perspective, I think it's massive. I guess another theme is fertility in the workplace, and I suppose I've touched on that by almost, you know, saying that I'm really open with my team, they can come and talk to me. Could I be more open? I probably could, because, you know, I don't want to talk about my story every day to people, because um, that's not necessarily what people come to work for, but certainly when I've had an opportunity to speak to people one-on-one, -on -one, and we've talked about, you know, the kind of their life plan, and it's come up, um, and they've asked me the question, then, then I've, I've, hopefully I've, I've, I've helped them. Is it maybe something that employing so many women I should talk about more openly and maybe do like dropping sessions for you know the, the the girls that want to talk about it yeah it probably is actually and there's no reason why I don't do that other than time and um probably just not massively thought about it um but I guess that's the point of these weeks isn't it is to kind of shine a light on things that we should be discussing more in the workplace and um, literally just before doing this video um, one of my team sent me a link to an article and I think it was around co-op being the first employer to grant um, leave for fertility treatment and actually let's just talk about that because there's the whole fertility in the workplace and you know, being able to have conversations and not dreading telling your manager that you're pregnant because of the impact it would have on work. Like, I just think that's such a backward mentality, but I know it's probably how a lot of women still feel. Um, but then you've got the whole, if, if you are, and you, as a woman, you have to go, you know, undergo fertility treatment whilst at work, that's really difficult. Like, I was fortunate that, you know, I had eight no's before I got a yes with Ruby over the course of about 15 months, and it was really taxing the medication, early morning scans, bloods, like it would have massively interfered with work. Well, it did massively interfere, but if I was employed by somebody, um, the sneaking about would have just been impossible. But it's hard because it's a private subject, so, and some people aren't as, you know, inclined to share as much as I will do. So I suppose it's got to be driven by the individual, but certainly having an environment where people can talk about it. And I guess as a leader, and that's what I always try to do, um, if I'm kind of open and honest and vulnerable about my experience, then hopefully that means that others can be too. Um, and then I guess we've got fertility fairness, which is um, no doubt an interesting subject. So my story on this is, is quite different. Um, I, I know that there, it, it can differ from region to region, can't it, in terms of funding for fertility. Um, for me, I didn't have that even decision to make, I guess, in terms of what PCT I was under, because as a single woman going through fertility treatment, you're not eligible for funding. Um, so the, the, the background be behind all of that, and, and it's not changed yet, I do think it will change probably in the not too distant future, but I did apply for funding um, on the NHS and I got a letter back to say that in adherence to NICE guidelines as a single woman, you're not eligible. Um, I then appealed, um, which won't surprise a lot of people, I then appealed and they came back and said that, um, it, was cr it was crazy actually, so they basically said if I could demonstrate a kind of medical conditions, so I got diagnosed with endometriosis when I was in my mid-20s, um, and that has definitely been um, a part to play in my fertility being quite poor, um, so I, um, kind of appealed and said exactly that. They then came back, which was really interesting, and said that they wouldn't fund a round of IVF, but they would fund another six rounds of IUI. So IUI is only what you would have done if you were doing it as a single woman, and that is a less intrusive form of IVF. Um, which is, and, and, and it costs a lot less, which is why they were obviously suggesting to go through that, but having already gone through six rounds of IUI, there's just no way you'd put your body through that because the percentage chance of success is so much lower than IVF. Um, and I would have liked to fight back, to have fought back, but if I'm honest, I was so far kind of through the IVF process and it was so taxing both mentally and physically that I'd, ultimately I just wanted a baby. Like it wasn't that I couldn't afford it, it was the fact that I felt as a single woman I should still be eligible to it. Um, very, up until very recently, same-sex couples haven't been eligible for fertility funding. However, there's been a law that's been passed literally in the last kind of two, three months, which now means that same-sex couples um, can access 
funding, which is really good. Um, so there is definitely progress being made. I mean, that that is unbelievable. Like that's in my eyes, same-sex couples not being able to access fertility funding is far worse in my eyes than you know me as a single woman not being able to. So that has changed, and I don't know how restrictive or not that is in relation to um, a kind of a, you know like a, 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 a guy in a woman going for it, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I hope that we get to a world relatively imminently where funding is available for women to do it on their own. And I think, I think we will get to that point because I think for lots of different reasons, more and more women are doing this. So I do think it will become more of an issue. Um, and I guess finally, just kind of on my own um, fertility experience, um, having gone through it myself, it's bloody hard like you know there's absolutely no getting away from it the number you know of no's you can get before you get a yes how emotional and it's only when I kind of look back after having Ruby that I was like wow for the last three years of my life um like it's been like on the knife edge all the time in terms of not knowing if it was going to work waiting for two weeks am I pregnant am I not the constant feeling shit when it was a no so I guess as an employer like if, if you've gone through it yourself as a manager or a leader, then you just know. Um, and obviously we're talking about kind of the fertility treatment side here. There's obviously couples that get pregnant naturally, and that's not a walk in the park either. But I think if you've gone through that experience, you know as a manager or a leader. So I would really just suggest that empathy if you haven't experienced it, because it is such a tough time. And then I guess as an individual going through it, yeah, it's... It, like I say, it's so hard, um, one of the hardest things I've ever gone through, um, but what I would say is to encourage you to speak to your employer, if that's something that you're comfortable with, and or, like, I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody, whether it just be about fertility generally, or if you are a single woman watching this, because I've probably had maybe 10 or 15 women um, since putting a post on about Ruby, kind of contact me and say, do you mind going for coffee? Um, I just want to, like, you know, like, pick your brains about it all, so more than happy to do that as well. But yeah, hopefully that's a little bit about my uh, fertility journey. I hope that's helped.